Okay, so we'll try to do this again with keys. Just a quick, you know, we'll do it first with symmetric keys here. So a uh, quick reminder of our notation. So we encrypt the plain text with the key K to cipher text. We decrypt the cipher text with the key K to back to plain text. Here's an important thing, okay. In these two chapters, we're looking at protocols. So with rare exception, I mean, we're in chapter 10, we'll mention a few crypto things, but for 99% of this, we're concerned with attacks on protocols, okay, not attacks on cryptography. So here's a question I put on the test. I often put a question on the test, and I'll say, you know, here's a protocol, uh, find an attack on this protocol, and it involves encryption, right? And invariably, somebody will say, do an exhaustive key search, get the key, and then you've broken the protocol. You can't do that. That's cheating. Okay. We're considering the protocol, the crypto to be secure. You're trying to attack the protocol itself. Okay, okay so we're going to rely on a symmetric key. That means Alice and Bob have to share the symmetric key, right? However that happened. We assume they have the symmetric key, and nobody else has it. So Trudy doesn't know the symmetric key, just Alice and Bob. Now, if you're Bob, you're talking to somebody, and they're claiming to be Alice, how can they prove to you that they're Alice? Well, they have to do something involving that symmetric key, right? Because that's the only thing that identifies, you know, Alice and Bob from everybody else. So you've got to do something with the key. Uh, somehow prove that you know the key, okay? You have to do it in a way that Bob can verify and Trudy cannot replay. you got to take those things into account. Okay, so here we go. So Alice and Bob share the key K, right? Okay. So Alice comes along and says, hey, I'm Alice. Bob says, Alice. send an ounce, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's just call it R because it's a randomly chosen value. Now, what's the simplest thing Alice could do to prove that she knows the key K that Bob could verify? Thank you. Key. Encrypt it and send it back. Okay, just like the make in the middle thing, right? Okay. So she encrypts the random value, sends it back to Bob. What does Bob do when he receives that? He decrypts it, makes sure that the value is R, he knows what he's supposed to get, right? And he can verify whether he gets R or not. If he does, he knows he's talking to Alice. Uh, okay, what about Alice? Does she know she's talking to Bob here? No, you could put Trudy over there, who doesn't know the key, doesn't know anything, and she can send a random value, right? Just as well as anybody else. And so we're not even trying to authenticate Bob here but it does seem to work to authenticate Alice, okay? And that's good. Okay. So now let's try to step it up a little bit here. Can we modify this or improve on this so that we can get mutual authentication? So both Alice and Bob are authenticated. Well, it should be easy, right? We've got this authentication working in one direction, so let's just try something simple here. How about this? I'm Alice. Here's my challenge to you, Bob. Bob encrypts that, sends it back, and then Alice uh, encrypts it and sends it back too. Uh, okay, so how about um, Alice? Does she know she's talking to Bob here? Well, what would Alice do? When this thing shows up, what does she do? She could decrypt it. She would look to see that it's R. She sent the challenge R, so it's not a replay, right? It's current, and it shows up. Oh, it must be Bob, because he's the only one that has that key. What about Bob? Well, he decrypts this. He sees R. He says, oh, it's current. It's not a replay. It must be Alice, right? <laughs> no, definitely not. Okay, why not? She didn't have to do anything. In other words, put Trudy here, right? Yeah. Who doesn't know the key, doesn't know anything. She can say, I'm Alice. She can send a random value, and she can send back whatever shows up in the next message. Right? And that's all she can <laughs> So it doesn't authenticate Alice, but it does authenticate Bob. OK, so that's not going to work. OK, it was a little too simple. OK, let's try to improve on this, though, because we do have this authentication going in one direction, right? So can we do something simple? It will authenticate both sides here. Well, okay, let's just take the original protocol and let's do it in both directions, okay? Now, the only problem is it took us three messages, right, to authenticate one side, and then we could do three more messages and authenticate the other side. 
let's just combine a few messages to, so we don't have six messages, okay, make it a little more efficient. And this has just got to work because it worked, you know, for one direction. So again, they both know the key K. I'm Alice, here's my challenge to you, Bob. Call it R sub A. And what does Bob do? Encrypt it, send it back. But he also sends his challenge, right? So he sends a challenge along with that. He says, okay, here's my challenge to you, Alice. Uh, and here's gonna prove to you that I'm Bob. Okay, and what's Alice supposed to do with that? Encrypt it and send it back, right? Okay, so do we get the mutual authentication? Well, just like on the previous slide, right? This comes back and Alice says, oh, that's Bob, right? This is current, it's not a replay. I made that challenge up. Bob, he sees this come back and he says, hey, that challenge came back, it's encrypted. It must have got through, reached Alice, she encrypted it with the key K, sent it back, that's gotta be Alice. Because I know I didn't do it, right? And I'm the only one, the one who has the key. So that's, Since Alice can choose her random value, in this case, couldn't Trudy somehow take advantage of that to Well, to Alice, write? okay, Alice chooses the challenge for Bob, right? Mm -hmm. So that's trying to convince you, convince Alice that it's Bob. You could put Trudy here, right? And the first part would be okay, because she doesn't care, you know, she doesn't have to prove that it's Bob. She's just trying to break but the code. if she had two simultaneous things going, couldn't she... Oh, hold on. <laughs> okay, so this is great, right? Wonderful, PG. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so same protocol. Let's put Trudy in here and see what happens. Trudy does not know the key K, right? So she shows up and she says, I'm Alice, and here's my challenge to you, Bob. What does Bob do according to the protocol? He encrypts that, sends it back along with his challenge to Alice, right? Okay, so now Trudy's stuck, right? Because she doesn't know how to encrypt this. So, you know, what does she do? Think big in the middle, okay? <laughs> she can open a new <coughs> connection. Go down here and open a new connection to Bob. Take this value, R sub B, send it as her challenge. Say, hey, I'm Alice. Here's a challenge to you, Bob. What's Bob going to do with that? Thank you. Encrypt it, send it back with some other challenge. Trudy doesn't care about this connection, just let it time out. Take this value here, and she can now complete the connection up there. All right? Well, that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> Had this thing that worked just fine in one direction, now we try to make it work in both directions, and we get in trouble. Okay, so again, that's kind of the subtlety of protocols. It just looks like that's got to work, right? But, you know, there's a potential problem there. Okay, so how can we fix this protocol? This is another thing that happens on the test, okay? So I'll give you a protocol, or in the homework, and I'll say modify this protocol to make it secure. You know, there's an attack on this. I might ask you what is the attack, and I'll say modify it to make it secure. <coughs> Invariably, somebody will write, use SSL <coughs> instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a modification, okay? A modification, I mean, make a small change, okay? There's some small change we can make to this protocol. Okay, think about what's the real problem here. Why why does this fail? Where's the issue? Alice can choose a random. Uh, Alice chooses the challenge for Bob. Bob chooses the challenge for Alice. That's the way it's supposed to work. You have to do it that way. Same key. Yeah. Same key. I mean. If Bob were using a different a different key. Okay, actually some protocols do that. You can actually use one key for this direction and one key in the other direction. That would solve the problem here, okay? Some protocols do that. Uh, anything else, anything? The real problem, okay, what is the real issue here? The real issue is that Alice and Bob are actually doing exactly the same thing. Can we make them do something different? Oh, uh, you probably could do that. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> so you could encrypt here and decrypt. Okay, so that might might do it. There may be some, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. Um, <laughs> here's an easy one. Okay, how about if we just put this inside the encryption? 
still works, right? Pretty Palace can still get that by decrypting this and then send back one value encrypted. They're doing something different. So Trudy cannot get Bob to do something else it's supposed to do. Even simpler, or one, one that I like even better, is, is, I swear it's coming here. Okay, here we go. Okay, just put their identities in here, right? Or you could even put something generic like, uh, you know, server, client in there. Anything as long as it's different. Okay, in this case, if you know if, if, if you're doing this and Trudy tried to attack on the previous slide, what would happen? Bob would get something here that says, or something, uh, something here, wherever. It, uh, Bob would get. Oh, yeah. And when Bob would send something here that says Bob, and the third message, Trudy would send something here that says Bob. Yeah. Right. So. Bob wouldn't accept that because it says Bob. <laughs> it's supposed to say us. Here's another thought. Okay, back to this. Uh, I don't want to go back. Okay, back to the previous version of the protocol without Alice and Bob in there. What could Bob do? Anything else Bob could do to prevent this kind of attack? Suppose we want to use that protocol just the way it was written. Could we make it secure? Well, how about if Bob remembers the nonsense? He could just remember he used R sub E. When it shows up again, he'd say, hey, something's wrong there. Right? He could remember the nonsense he's used. Yeah, think about it. Anyway, that would be a bad solution because the server has to remember lots of stuff. You don't want to put that sort of burden on the server. This is much simpler. You don't have to remember anything. OK. So again, really minor changes to the protocol make uh, sort of all the difference here. 